We got a couple of things to talk about today. Matthew Boyd is officially a Detroit Tiger, and his introductory press conference was today. And the biggest news of the day, Michael Lorenzen has agreed to a contract with the Detroit Tigers. We will talk about both of those things today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked on Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Thursday, December 15th, 2022. Thank you for making Locked on Tigers your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Okay, so peek behind the curtain here, okay? Little, little, let's just be honest with each other, all right? Um, I have... I had a family dinner on Wednesday night, and I had, for the last several weeks, I have been waiting until later in the evening to record my Tiger shows just in case a move happened. I didn't want to be like, oh, I'll record my show at noon, and then we'll sign someone at six, and I'll have to redo my show anyway. So I was waiting until later in the evening, and... The day that I gave up on that was today. And before my family dinner, I was like, you know what? We're not making a move. We're not signing anybody. Let's just get this show out of the way before my dinner. Then I'll have to record Red Wings after dinner. And then we'll be all set. And of course, the day that I bail on that philosophy, the Tigers signed someone immediately upon my arrival to my family's dinner. So there you go. This is my second time recording today's episode. Much different episode this time around, as we're actually talking about a move, whereas also, to be completely honest with you, the previous one was a lot of talking about how there might not be a lot of moves left in the offseason. <laughs> but that episode never sees the, sees the light of day, and this one will be about Matthew Boyd's introductory press conference and Michael Lorenzen officially becoming a Detroit Tiger. Let's do the Boyd stuff first. I, I Look, I, I know you're like sighing and you're like, oh my goodness, why are we even talking about Matt Boyd's press conference? I understand. So I think that there are some quotes to look at for starters. And I'm not saying that any of these are more than what they are, which is a quote from an introductory press conference. But I do want to talk about the fact that he was officially, you know, introduced as as rejoining because there was a while that, you know, two weeks between like making it official and, you know, when the, the agreement supposedly happened. So kind of weird that it took this long, but I do want to talk about it because it did happen today and, and there were, you know, reporters there and everything and it was a press conference and Harris was asked questions. But obviously, a majority of the show will be Michael Lorenzen. So we're just going to take a little bit here at the beginning, talk about the Matt Boyd press conference, and then we will get into Michael Lorenzen and break that down for the rest of the show. Matthew Boyd, officially a Detroit Tiger again. Um, you know, it's it's impossible not to root for Matt Boyd, man. Like, I, I understand that people, you know, on the field, whatever you want to feel on the field about Matthew Boyd and whatnot, you know, go ahead. But... That is one of the best human beings to ever put on at Old English D. His foundation is amazing. The work he does off the field is absolutely spectacular. By every single account, he is such an amazing dude. He's a great clubhouse presence. He's going to be a leader of this team. He's going to be someone that the young players can go to. That's all like objectively true. And so I, I understand that people initially looked at the $10 million deal and were like, oh my goodness, we're, you know, we're, we're going about back down this road again. And, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, for starters, the market ended up kind of making the boy deal make sense. Okay. I know at the time we were like, wow, that seems like kind of a lot of money. The rest of the off season up to this point, the starting pitching market has been very flavorful. Has been very pricey, so it makes the Matt Boyd signing the the ten million dollars at least make a lot more sense. Okay, and 
you do need a, a clubhouse guy. You do need somebody that you can point to and go, hey, uh, you know, I need advice on something as a young player. Who do I go to? I'm going to go to Matthew Boyd. That's all great. And I know that that's not everything. And I know that you're like, oh, my goodness, save this. For later, I don't want to hear any of this. I dislike the signing, and that's all there is to it. And that's fine. That That's, you know, you're you, and you have your right to feel that way. I'm just saying this is not, like, the worst move in the history of the Tigers. Like, you're bringing back a stand-up, good clubhouse presence, and he does have the potential to, to pitch some decent baseball for you this year. Okay? Uh, one of the reasons when when – Scott Harris was asked about Matthew Boyd. One of the reasons that he cited as to bringing in Boyd was, quote, Matt is not the same pitcher he was when he was first here in Detroit. I think there are some elements of his game that have developed and improved since he left Detroit. I worked with him firsthand on that in San Francisco. I just wanted to highlight that one because I think that that's like so painfully obvious. And I, like we talked about it on on the episode where where Boyd came back, like, that was something you could so easily point to and be like, I feel like there's probably a connection here. And I feel like Harris just like really likes Matthew Boyd and really likes what he brings to the table. And so that makes a lot of sense. And we talked about it on the show. There's a little bit of a different point in his set right before, well, right after his set, rather, right when he starts his extension. The ball is at a little bit of a different point. There's been some pictures that have gone around online kind of showcasing the, the difference in and where he starts his where the ball is when he starts his extension so that's something and then the other big thing is he throws the change up a whole heck of a lot more and that's something that that I've been talking about with Matt Boyd for 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 years um but that's besides the point like th this is a a I don't know if reinvented might be a little too dramatic but like this is somebody who has made a lot of changes to his game on the mound, the relief outings that he did have for Seattle in the second half of the season were solid, even though it was, I think, like under 20 innings and it was all out of the bullpen, like fine, but th they were solid. And, and so I do think that there is a, a, a product here that can be really effective. And, and if it stays healthy, really solid in this rotation this season. And I, I also think that with the signing of Boyd and Lorenzen, you have a lot of starting pitchers now. And so we'll get into that at the end of the show. We'll, we'll kind of, I didn't mean to just do a teaser on you. <laughs> that wasn't my intention, but I accidentally did. Um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that, that at the end and kind of what, what is happening with all of these, these starting pitchers that we're accumulating. But uh, I, I do think that it, it just is important to note that, that he, he has objectively changed some stuff about his game since he left Detroit, even though it was only in like 17 innings. And uh, it's never a bad thing to have him in the clubhouse, no matter what he does on the field. Okay. Let's, and again, I know that that's not everything. I, I want a good pitcher too. I I'm not trying to say that, you know, we should just take on terrible people that are like terrible on the field product for really good people rather. Like, I'm not saying that that's just like a, a trade-off we should hundred percent make. I I'm just saying that, that, that is not a bad thing. Okay. Uh, some other stuff just, like really quickly, again, like these are all just quotes in an introductory press conference. I'm not, we're just taking the first segment here to just kind of go over it because it was a big thing today where everybody in Port was at it. Um, Matt Boyd says, that's all of our goal to go out there and be excited, bring excitement back to Tiger baseball. The fans deserve it. That's nice to hear, obviously. Um, Matthew Boyd said that he has unfinished business in Detroit. Also, the other thing that I, I think is important to note, and this will be the last thing. We'll move on and get to Lorenz, and I know that that's why you're here anyway, but it, it, it is important to note that Boyd said being a starting pitcher was kind of like non-negotiable for him. That was like a non-starter. Like he, he was only going to be approached by teams that considered him a starting pitcher. And so that kind of gets rid of all doubt of, of what his role is on going to be on this team. I, I, we told you, right? We talked about on this show, I told you that, he was going to be a starting pitcher the second that I saw $10 million. We didn't bring him in to be a reliever. But uh, if there was any doubt left in anybody's mind, it is certainly erased with this press conference where he said that. So Matthew Boy will certainly be a starter. And, yeah, that's it. I, again, I, I just wanted to – it's official. We had to talk about it. It was something that happened around the team today. Um, and, and I did think that there was something to take from the quotes there. Uh, that that were said in the press conference. But let's move on to the news of the day. Obviously, the Tigers make a free agent signing. 
Michael Lorenzen is a Detroit Tiger. So we're going to break that down right after I tell y'all about a message from the NHTSA. You're hanging out with some friends. You're putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. But nah, you live nearby. You can make it home okay. It's not a big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car. You kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of drunk driving. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that doesn't stop people. It doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. And that's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. All right, everybody. Welcome back here. Segment two of Locked On Tigers. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. For your second listen, check on the Locked On Sports Today podcast from the biggest stories around the league and the games that matter the most. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts. Insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today It's available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. All righty. Michael Lorenzen, officially Detroit Tiger. One year, $8.5 million deal. Incentives can be, I think make that up to 10. We don't know what those incentives are at the time of this recording, but uh, one and a half million in incentives and eight and a half total. Okay. So I have a lot of opinions on this move and they're not all necessarily about Michael Lorenzen specifically. So I want to start with the ones that are about Michael Lorenzen specifically. Okay. And then we will kind of venture off into the area that is the great unknown of what does this mean for the rest of the offseason, okay? For starters, though, Michael Lorenzen, 30 years old, the California native, uh, pitched for the Los Angeles Angels last year. Well, there's a lot of stuff just around Michael Lorenzen, you know, the two-way player thing. Like, there's there's a lot about him that that makes him just super fascinating. But, uh, yeah, pitched for L.A. last year. It It was a fine season like it, it was not anything nuts but, but I mean he had a 4-2-4 ERA in 18 starts just under 100 innings pitched 85 strikeouts a 1-2-8-0 whip uh, he did not make a single bu- appearance out of the bullpen now there's a couple things that I want to highlight first off in September he was really good and uh, I think that that is important to note only because, like, if it was just, okay, like, he, he was good in September, who cares? Like, sure. But as, well, Cody Stavenhagen of The Athletic retweeted a tweet from Brian Smith, who works for Bleacher Nation, one of the Cubs websites. Uh, and he pointed out that Michael Lorenzen, in September, pretty much completely changed his pitch arsenal and went from a two-pitch pitcher but it depended on the handness of the batter which i think is absolutely fascinating so in against lefties he threw change up and four seam and against righties he threw slider and four seam and that was pretty clearly almost exactly the month of september that he did that and in the month of september he had the best month of his season i guess april he was pretty good too but that was in a lot less innings uh he had a two three six era in september slash october in 26 and two-thirds innings pitch had a whip of just over one and a k per nine of just over 10 so if that is believed to carry over into this season then that's something to keep an eye out for. Again, like people are are always trying to find an edge, always trying to get into it. And like, he didn't have a very good June at all. Like he he had almost a seven ERA in 20 innings. He gave up 15 runs in 20 innings in the month of June. Okay. At the end of the day, this is a, a, an eight and a half million dollar signing on a one year deal. But I, I, I do think that there is production here that is very salvageable and, and something that, 
honestly, this team can kind of can kind of look at and say we can hang our hat on on this if this all works out. Um, again, had a really strong beginning of the season as well. A two nine three ERA in April, a three three one ERA in May. And like it was literally just June was really bad, and then he may only made one start in July, and it was only three innings, and uh, got got absolutely blown up in that one. So outside of of June and then the one start in July, if you remove those, this is like a really nice season. And again, with the reinvention of kind of his arsenal at the end of the season, I I think that that's something you can look at and and kind of be relatively excited about. I mean, uh, he ended the season again with a, what did I say? A four, two, four ERA. And yet by month, he only had one month of the entire year where his ERA was over four. So, like, again, you're you're cutting out. And I know that's a dangerous game and a slippery slope. And, oh, let's just cut out all the bad starts. Like, I understand that. But because they are they are clumped all into one, I, I think – and, again, because there was a, a change in approach afterwards, I, I think there is reason to be somewhat excited about it. I, I don't think that this is just a, 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 you know, we just need innings type of signing. I, I think they, they did this with intent. I, I think we are past the days – of, you know, we just want to bring in like a Jose Urania or a Michael Pineda type just to pitch innings. Like, I, I think we're at a point where we, we need innings, yes, but, and I, I've been a, a very vocal person on the train of like, we we still need innings, but I, I think that there can be a lot more intent with those innings and a lot more potential to, to go past, you know, this season. Um, again, just a one-year deal, but one year deals can turn into to extensions and you get first dibs at extensions. So that that's why you do that. Um, the the other thing that I think was pointed out by, by some people and is definitely worth noting is that this is the first slightly off brand signing. When you look at like walk numbers, right? Like th- this is a, a, a dude who really throughout most of his career has not been like absolutely terrible in the walk department, right? Like it's not like, oh my goodness, he's walking, you know, seven per nine as a starting pitcher. But uh, I mean, a a solid, you know, four-ish walk per nine as a starting pitcher. It was a little bit lower, I guess, at times as a reliever. But I mean, this is a, you know, last season, I believe he was in the 13th percentile. There it is for for walk percentage amongst pitchers. So bottom 15% in the league, but it wasn't an astronomically high number. I think it was a little over four. Yeah. Four, four Oh five walk per nine, seven, eight, three K per nine. It's not a super high K number either. Um, but again, if it, I know this is, this is really like, if you're, if you opened this episode and you're like, I hate this signing and I need someone to, to be mad about this signing with me, or I need someone to like prove me otherwise. I understand that me saying, hey, look at one month out of the year and like hang your hat on that for this being really cool and going to work out really well in 2023 is not necessarily like music to your ears. I totally understand that. And and you can have reservations and hesitations about it all you want. But I'm just trying to, to pinpoint the reasoning for like, hey, why did we take a chance on this dude? Why did we take a one-year flyer on him? Okay, and, and that those that's what I'm trying to highlight. He also was pretty solid in his ability to not give up super hard contact. Um, 59th percentile in average exit velocity, 58th percentile in hard hit percentage, 62nd percentile in expected slugging percentage, and 60th percentile in barrel percentage. So didn't give up a, a ton of bombs, didn't give up a ton of super hard contact. That being said, wasn't a big swing and miss strikeout guy either. So you're going to get some some pitch to contact type stuff. Uh, but again, had a lot of strikeouts in September. So it, it's really like, what do you believe is really, I guess that's more of a subjective thing than, than an objective thing at this point. But uh, I'm just trying to lay out all the facts and you come to your own conclusion. Like, does, does this mean that, oh, you know, September is the, is the quote-unquote new Michael Lorenzen and that new pitch mix and everything is, is just going to fix all and we're just going to get a 2-3 whatever ERA for a full season? Probably not. But 
at the same time, I, I think that it's impossible to just ignore it and go like, oh, yeah, you know, he's totally what he was the first half of the season, and that's really all there is to it as well. Let's keep talking about it, though. There's a lot more at play here. We got to talk about starter versus bullpen. We got to talk about what we're doing with all these starters. We'll do that right after I tell you all about our friends over at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football, college bowl season, basketball, World Cup, they've got it all covered at BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They're, the, they're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So you can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. But online, where the game starts. All right. We are back here. Third and final segment of Locked on Tigers. So let's keep talking about Michael Lorenzen. I was trying to set something else up, and I was like, wait, this is what we're talking about. Okay. So with Lorenzen, a lot of people have looked at the fact that at the beginning of his career, he was a starter. And then from 2016 all the way through 2021, he was a rookie in 2015, starting pitcher. Sophomore season all the way through literally last year, he then has pretty much been exclusively in the bullpen. He has only started five baseball games from 2016 to 2021. Then he signed a deal with the Angels. They signed him as a starting pitcher. And he started 18 games the most by far, obviously, that he has started since his rookie season and put up those numbers that we've discussed. I know that a lot of people pointed to this and went, oh, like he could be a reliever. So here's my thing. I I think that they are signing him with the intent of giving him starting pitching innings. I don't think that it's out of the question or out of the realm of possibility for him to get appearances out of the bullpen this year. Uh, I, I'm not sure he's going to be the swing man per se. But, uh, like, we still do have Tyler Alexander at the end of the day, and we still are going to have more starting pitchers than five. So uh, I'm not sure that that he'll necessarily be that swing man, but I, I do think that they brought him in with the intention of providing innings as a starter. Now, we can now transition into the really kind of like tinfoil hat part of the episode, okay? I think that this sets up trades. Not for Michael Lorenzen, obviously. He is going to pitch for the Detroit Tigers in 2023. But I think you make a move like this because you want some sort of a, I guess we'll call it a safety net. If you were to trade one of your starting pitchers for a bat, you now have, hey, we can afford maybe, and it's not, you know, we've had more than five for the entire offseason, but it's just we keep on, instead of going out and bringing in on a three-year deal, somebody that's just a solidified starter and going to be pitching 30 starts for the next three years for us, and we gave legitimate money and was the highest paid pitcher in this rotation at this point or gave him Erod money even, like, we didn't do that. Instead, we took an already overflowed starting pitching room and brought in more one year. If it works out, we can extend them. If it doesn't, no harm, no foul. And we brought in innings that can be valuable innings and have upside, but are also, if we do not make any trades, then we have eight pitchers, and it's not like the worst thing in the world if Michael Lorenzen doesn't start every fifth day because we're only paying him $8.5 million for one year. And I guess Matt Boyd's kind of in that conversation too, but I think he's a little more solidified in the rotation at this point. Okay? Um, I, I hope I'm articulating this well. So my point is that now you are in a position where you have somewhat of a safety net, whereas like, hey, if a trade for a Fiedo slash Brisky slash Wentz slash Garrett Hill came across your table and was going to give you a young controllable bat in return for one of those pitchers, you can do that and still have a, 
still more than five starting pitchers and still have that starting pitching depth that you desperately needed last season. Okay. There there's preparing for starting pitching, right? Which is what they needed. There there's that. And then there's just stockpiling everything that these, so that you can start trading away the access talent that you have. And I think that they might be trying to walk like the tightrope of doing both of those things. Okay. I'm not saying that a trade is happening tomorrow. I'm not saying a trade is happening in January. I'm not saying a trade is happening before opening day. But I'll be darned if a trade doesn't happen before the trade deadline. Uh, I I really do think, and I'm not saying that it's impossible for a trade to happen the rest of the offseason either. I'm sure they're working phones all day, every day. I, I, I just, that is the biggest thing, honestly, that I get out of this, a, a deal like this. This is just another way to guarantee starting pitching depth, even if you are to move on from somebody else. And then the big theory would be going back to earlier this week when we talked about the Erod trade. You're obviously not swapping in one for one Eduardo Rodriguez for Michael Lorenzen. Okay. I know Erod had a weird year, and it's certainly no disrespect to Michael Lorenzen. But, like, Erod has, is a pitcher that has received, like, Cy Young votes before. Like, th- this is a, a legitimate, like, middle of the rotation arm on a playoff team. And, oh, no, he's not. He's literally has been before. Okay? So, like, this is, is the type of caliber of pitcher that we could put on the market. Again, he's going to opt out. You can make all the jokes you want about last season and be, like, whatever. Look at the market this year and look at Erod's AAV. I am, I become more and more convinced every day this dude is opting out in 2023. And I think that these type of signings are, they're not the Michael Pineda, Jose Urania signings where it's like, we just need innings. We're just going to bring somebody in, but they are safety net signings so that, because they still have upside. Like, objectively, whatever jokes you want to make, Boyd and Lorenzen have more upside than Jose Urania ever did, right? So, there is a, a, I know it's a a big kind of like conspiracy theory thing I got going on, and and it might be a a, a pie on my face. You know, we might look back and be like, no, they just wanted a ton of depth. And and that's, that's totally fine if that happens. I have been clamoring for them to get innings and get starting pitching depth this entire offseason. I'm glad they're doing it. We had like 93 different starting pitchers this past season. Okay? we More than anybody, we know that, that we desperately needed some starting pitching depth and the ability to, you know, if three or four pitchers get hurt, still have dudes that were actually brought in to be starters available to pitch. That is all great. I am thrilled that that is, that is what they are doing. But because of the just extent of young talent that this team has in the starting pitching room, again, with Fiedo, Brisky, Hill, and Wentz, and those four all being of similar caliber at this present moment, you have the ability to shop one of them or... If you just want to make a big splash, you can shop Erod and then still have seven, eight starting pitchers. How many do we even have right now if, with, with counting Lorenzen as a starter? We have Erod, Boyd, Manning, Turnbull. Okay, those are like the four that are definitely going to be in the starting rotation. Then we have Fiedo, Wentz, Brisky. Hill, that's eight, and Lorenzen makes nine, okay? Nine players that on your 40-man roster, on your 26-man roster, are going to be labeled as SP. It's, it, I, like, how, what, are you going to put four of them in the bullpen to start off the season? 
I'm not saying trade all of them. I want to keep this depth. I des I've been asking for this depth for a month. For months. Uh, but that that is what I get out of this. And again, this might be laughable. And you might go, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And, and that's fine. That's what I get out of this. You Even if it, it gives you the ability to even shop. Right? Even if you don't find a trade that you like. Even if you you go through and look through the market and you don't even find a trade that you like and you're like, okay, we're not going to pull the trigger on any of these. You know, we we just have a ton of depth this season. Great. That that's a that's a conscious decision you made to keep everybody. Whatever. That's just faith in your front office at that point. But now at least you even have the ability to just test the market. You can actually take those calls. You don't have to be like, oh no, like we can't take any calls on starting pitchers because uh, we have four of them. Like, we have nine. We, we almost have two five-man rotations. I don't know. That's – maybe I, I'm just shouting into a cave and, and hearing my own echo. Is that an expression? I, I just totally made that up. I feel like that's not something anyone has said ever. But I, I – I, maybe I'm just screaming into the void. But, like, I I really – that that's the biggest thing I get out of this is you now have flexibility, whether it happens or not, no one knows, but you have flexibility and you have the ability now to shop starting pitchers. And that gives this roster more flexibility, gives this front office more flexibility, and it gives you the potential to make more moves. And at the end of the day, that's what everybody wants. So Michael Lorenzen in a vacuum, you don't like it fine, but I think pretty objectively, this sets up the possibility for more moves to follow. And that shouldn't upset anybody. All right. Took me like 12 minutes there in the third segment, but that is finally how I wanted to articulate it all along. <laughs> I love my job. Thank you for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day. For your next listen, check on the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, sorry this is late. Again, I know this isn't going up exactly at midnight because I'm finishing recording right after midnight here. But again, this is the second time I've recorded Locked On Tigers today, unfortunately. So here we are. We'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same place. You know the drill. Uh, peace and love. Going to Therapy's Dope. And I'll catch you all tomorrow, baby. Go Tigers.